So let's consider a situ situation in which P does change um, with successive trials or with successive samples. And one situation I can think of where that would be true is say we have uh, 20 rocks and we have some black ones and some white ones, right? So if we draw our first rock and it's black, okay, the probability of getting another black in, in the second trial changes, right? P changes is different from the first trial to the second and it's sim simply because we have a limited population size and by sampling it we're changing the distribution in the whole population. Another example is let's say we have we're prospecting for oil well, we're, we're going to drill for oil. We're, we're a drilling company and we want to drill for oil, oil. and our, pre, our geophysicists tell us that we have n or 50 um, prospects. So there are 50 locations where we might have oil. And um, we don't know this, but the Earth knows this, that there are s reservoirs out of the 50 in our prospects. Okay, so we don't have enough money to drill all 50 prospects. So we want to know, we want to know the probability of finding our reservoirs if we drill n times. Okay, so the goal here is to derive the probability of getting r successes out of n times when we know the um, the number of total process from a population of 50 of capital N equals 50 with s successful sites. Okay, so let's look at the number of ways of sampling are out of the S reservoirs. Okay, and we can use our binomial coefficients for that. So S over R tells us the number of ways we can sample R of those R out of those S reservoirs. And so let's look at the number of ways we can get um, n minus r dry holes out of the capital N minus s failed prospects. And likewise, that is n minus s total failed prospects, and there, um, the number of ways of that we could get that result is again the binomial coefficient with those two numbers. So the total number of ways. of getting R out of N successes is capital N minus S over little N minus R failures times S over R. Okay, so that gives us a number of ways that we can achieve that result, but we wanted to know the probability. So the probability, so to get to probability, we just want to know, we just have to divide that by the number of ways we can sample n sites.
sampling or drilling and sites. And that's equal to, we have a total of N sites, and if we were just, we have a total of capital N sites, and the number of ways that we can, number of all possibilities, all possible results, if we drill it N times, is this. Okay. So to get our probability, we just divide this by the total number of outcomes. Okay, so the probability, so again, that's the probability of our successes out of This is a case, and this is the case in which our total population is relatively small. And this is called a hypergeometric distribution. So, in summary, we looked at two different ways of estimating the probability of getting R successes out of N trials. The first way was using the binomial probability distribution. And, and this was relevant in which the probability of a single trial, little p, for a success, that remains constant throughout the series of trials that we make. And this is this would be a case, for example, in which we have a or sampling from a large population. The second way was the situation where the population was limited. And in, in that case, the probability of sub, um, a sequence of event of successes change, or the probability of each success changes as you sample the population. Now, we've been talking about various terms um, without really defining them but I'd like to formally define them right now. And the first is uh, population. So in statistics, we can formally, formally state that the set of all possible, all possibilities is called the sample space. population. So that's what we've been meaning when we say population. Um, maybe that was clear, maybe that you sort of thought that already, but I wanted to make that clear. And that set can be infinite or finite as we've already discussed. Now a subset of the population is referred to as a sample. And right, so as we draw from that population, we draw a subset and we call that our sample. And the sample can be made of m one or more elements. one or more elements or objects. And in general, it's a collection of individual um, individual items. And, and that's different, for example, when we a, ge a geologist might take a rock sample, and oftentimes they'll refer to that as a single rock sample, so it's a single object. But in statistics, we'll refer to a sample as one or more elements that we've drawn from the population. Now let's let's talk about some um, let's let's talk about some rules of probability. And 
we'll sort of write this out formally. Get my pen going here. So the one thing I should say, okay, so probabilities are always positive or zero. So if we were to write that out, we would say that the probability of A is always less than zero, less than, or, sorry, greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to one. So if we say that S is the sample space, that is, that's the full po population representing all possibilities, then the probability of S is what? It's necessarily, by definition, 1. Right? S has absolute certainty of existing. So another point is that if two events or two elements are mutually exclusive, by mutually exclusive, I'm, that means that only one can occur at a time. They can't both occur at the same time, then the probability of one or the other occurring is written as P, for example, A, and this is a cap, it looks like a capital U for union, that's the probability of A plus the probability of B. One or the other can happen, and therefore we add the probabilities of both of Again, this is union, meaning or. So if two events are independent, probability of both is written P A and B and this is this is when we um, multiply the probability That's true when they're completely independent events. There's no dependence between the two events. There's another symbol meaning complement. Where if we have a probability A, we would write the complement as probability of A prime. And that means not A, and of course if we sum the probability of A with the probability of everything but A, of course we get 1.